evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Council will begin in a few moments. The City Council meets on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. and serves as the City's policymaking and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rule of Order unless those guidelines conflict with City Ordinance or Charter. City Council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the Council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the Council. When addressing the Council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the Chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the Council's deliberative process. By City Ordinance, all remarks must be addressed to the City Council as a body and not to any City Council member, including the Mayor. The Chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City Council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at SiouxFalls.org. Information regarding the City Council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting SiouxFalls.org slash council or by calling the Council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. It is uh, Tuesday, November 14th. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. We appreciate it. We'll start the meeting by introducing you to your City Council. Council Member Selberg. Here. Starr. Here. Staley. Here. Erickson. Erpenbach. Here. Kylie. Here. Neitzert. Present. Rolfing. Here. Councilors, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And we also thank uh, Executive Pastor Lars Olson with First Lutheran Church, uh, who will lead us in our invocation tonight. Thank you, uh, Pastor Lars, for being here. We really appreciate it. What we'd ask is that you stand for uh, the pastor's invocation and then remain standing, please, for our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Pastor Lars. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give us a vision of a world that is holy where nations bring glory to you and treat one another with dignity and respect. Look upon and visit the cities of the earth this day to renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life together. Send us honest and able leaders and grant them the blessing of wisdom. Help us to eliminate poverty and prejudice and oppression that peace may prevail amongst all of us with justice and order, so that men and women of all cultures with differing talents may find in one another their mutual humanity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. 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 Thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everybody, and, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Certainly, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody here uh, with the proclamation, but uh, if not, I will just read it on the city's behalf. Uh, the proclamation reads, whereas... There, there, well, great. Come on up. Come on up. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, good to have you here. Please, uh, do you want to come up as well? You're wearing purple. Come on. Please uh, introduce yourself to the people of Sioux Falls, please. Thank you. I'm Steve Yed. 
and it's my wife, Sue. Hi. Thank you, Steve. Thank we're, you. Well, we're with Pan Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, and um, this month is National Pancreatic Awareness Month, the month of November, and actually Wednesday, the 16th of November, is World Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Day. So anybody who has purple, who could wear purple on this Thursday, on uh, the 16th, it's just honoring anybody who's either passed away from it or currently, you know, getting treatment for it. And it's just to raise awareness, uh, basically. And Stephen, you're in Sioux Falls. Yes. Very good. Sure. Absolutely. Please. We just wanted to thank you very much for all your support and for doing the proclamations for us and for coming to our inaugural Purple Stride. We had our first walk this year, and you weren't feeling well that day, and you came and you showed your support, and we really do appreciate it. My pleasure. And Steve will be an 11-year survivor in December. <laughs> Great job. Wow. Stephen, we'll, we'll clap for that later. The proclamation reads, whereas in 2017, an estimated 53,670 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States, and Sadly, 43,090 will die from the disease. Whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers, it is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and is the only major cancer with a five-year relative survival rate in the single digits at just 9%. Whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it, it is in the late stage and 73% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, while 93% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years. Whereas, approximately 110 deaths will occur right here in South Dakota in 2017. Whereas, the incidence and death rate for pancreatic cancer are increasing, and pancreatic cancer is anticipated to move from the fourth to the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States by 2020. Whereas, the Pancreatic Cancer Answer Action Network is a national organization serving the pancreatic cancer community in Sioux Falls and nationwide through a comprehensive approach that includes public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness, and education related to developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. Whereas, the good health and well-being of the residents of Sioux Falls, like Steve, are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection, causes, and effective treatments. Whereas, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and its affiliates right here in Sioux Falls support those patients currently battling pancreatic cancer, as well as to those who have lost their lives to the disease and are committed to nothing less than a cure. Now, therefore, I am Mike Huther, Mayor of the City of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim November 2017 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Sioux Falls. Stephen is a survivor, uh, blessed by that. Thank you for bringing awareness to, to, this, uh, to this disease and uh, good things to come. Let's give a round of applause to Steve and Pride and for being here. Councilors, thanks for that opportunity. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll now move to our consent agenda. Any uh, motions, changes? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Selberg. We've got a motion uh, by Councilor um, uh, Rolfing to uh, approve our consent agenda. Second by Councilor Selberg. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erfenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Our regular agenda, Council, <coughs> any changes to that? 
Move to approve. Second, Erickson. Council Chair Kiley has made a motion to approve our agenda tonight. Seconded by Council Vice Chair Erickson. Thank you. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erkenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Thank you. That is also passed 8 to 0. Folks, welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Really glad to have you all here. This is an opportunity, if you want to engage the council on a topic that is important to you, please just come forward. Uh, state your name, please, to the people of, of our great city. And uh, you'll have up to five minutes uh, to, to speak. And uh, we just ask you to be professional, uh, cordial, and respond to the council as a body, as a whole. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Beekler, and my husband was an Air Force vet. And my complaint is with the VA hospital. They wouldn't, he died of liver failure at the Vera Hospice Center over a year ago. They wouldn't help him. He went in many a times to the hospital at the VA. He served the Air Force. He had a head injury. He tried eight years to get his service connection. D. Myers, they denied him every, every way. What my problem is, they call me up at midnight and say, come and get him. He was so sick, I took him over to Vera and they told me he was dying. The VA did not help him one iota, and I don't understand how they could be so careless. There was many a times, even when he was dying, McKinnon asked him to pay part of his hospice bill to have people come in because he couldn't walk no more. He was only 58 years old, and they didn't even do that for him. I'm very disappointed with this VA system. They pick and choose people who they decide needs to be on disability, and he never got his. That's my complaint, sir. Marilyn, thank you, and thanks for your sacrifice as well. We appreciate it. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Hello, my name's Catherine Riffle. I was here a couple weeks back, and I spoke for the homeless. I want to correct that word. I want to be direct about street dwellers. They are not just homeless people out there. We have street dwellers out there that need our assistance. I did speak about the fact $60,000 was pulled out and you gave back. But I stand to think there was a mistake there. You should have probably gave 20,000 to the Dudley house so that they could still carry their weight with the support of the other people who live there and work their way through by paying and et cetera, exchanging their time and talents. You should have taken 30,000 and went and got some tiny homes for the street dwellers with hanging cots inside with little tiny bathrooms and take a parking lot and just park them there on wheels. We're beautifying our city. Sanford Hospital has got all this medical stuff going on. I mean, the list is just traumatic. My family, my daughter LB died a year on the 16th. And I'm standing here in her behalf and the behalf of the street dwellers and other homeless people. We will add that name now in there, that title. I don't like labeling people. But we have a need to get out there and get them off the streets in the cold. I don't know if you're going to open up a, a building somewhere or one, one room. I don't, I really need you to take attention to these people. They're writing me, they're coming to me, they're begging me to help them. You are my last chance now. If I was a millionaire, I'd have done it a long time ago. George doesn't bless me like that. I'm one of the ones that walks the hard path. I have been homeless. I'm not an alcoholic, don't like the stuff. But my daughter was a severe alcoholic, and she passed. Very terrible death. Since then, when I come back, there's been, what, five or more people died? I'm tired of it myself. I just ask you to help them. They can't help themselves. They have mental, physical illnesses. They're diseased. And we have Sanford out there building arenas and beautifying our city, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. But let's take some money somewhere and do a little tiny, I don't know if you want to label it a village, but just, I mean, I got it figured out, you know. You can get a little plan for $300 and free shipping. All we have to do is build it ourselves. You can get one for anywhere from 5,000, 10,000, depends on what you want in it. We don't have so many people that we can't take care of. We just gotta find a way to take care of it. I don't think 
truly myself, I thought I had known, but since my many strokes, I don't have some memory unless I'm uh, re revisited with it. So I don't have time right now, so I don't know how long time I'm taking. But uh, there's a way that you can take these little houses and beautify our city and let us be the first state to say, hey, we did it. Let, let other people use our ideas I'm coming up with some ideas. When I looked on the internet, there are places out there, other, other states that are trying it. But we can make it work. We got Sanford, you know? Let's get our people out of the jails and the prisons. When you pick them up, the police throw their belongings in the garbage, their blankets, their coats. We're out here at the Salvation Army. We're out here at the library giving away coats and blankets. And yet they're getting busted. And their, their record is like 29 arrests or more. How are they going to get a job and stuff, you know? If they're out there three to six months and they're newbies, we have a chance to get them and, and turn them around and save them and direct them. If they're out there six months to a year, we're getting touchy. A year to three, ah, oh, they're already accustomed to that freedom. And then after that, they're stuck. Okay, we have veterans out there too. And I always acknowledge a veteran. I, will, I just am that way. So. I will leave everybody to the thought of, if you want to ask me some more, I got some answers. Uh, I'm here. My name's Catherine Riffle. I'm an advocate for the homeless. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you, Catherine. Sorry for your loss. Uh, folks, anybody else? Welcome. Yeah, I again am Stephen Ciano, another, yet another blacklisted veteran, as was Brian Beekler. And uh, this is what they do. They kill us when they choose to. And that is what they have been trying to do. And then they pretend to have services available. Therefore, they refuse to pay for services, medical services, say, outside of the VA. And somebody needs to get on top of them. Now, especially since the uh, people in Falls Community Health have obtained records indicating that I was correct uh, accurate fully uh, in my presentation of what my disability actually is. It's PTSD since 78 from an attack on me for being different in the military. They don't like people who are different and they don't like me pointing the finger, which I have to do. Uh, I can't make my uh, claim of disability without pointing the finger at what they did to me to cause my uh, actual disability and instead in response to a denied appeal where I cited my legal standing, because I do know the law, I had, in contrast to uh, stated uh, VA uh, policy, a uh, psychiatrist in Southeastern Behavioral Healthcare, Deborah Kavanaugh, who uh, declared me delusional against prior confirmation of PTSD disability since 78, whereas the VA prior to that was declaring me not disabled. So a lot of suffering has befallen me, my children, and my wife, their, my children's mother, um, through the years as a result, and uh, as would be expected to happen. Now that I am in severe need of uh, medical care far beyond what uh, Falls Community Health has to offer. I want somebody, uh, as I had police come to uh, my door, uh, supposedly concerned that I was threatened, and then when I told them what the threat was, they refused to follow up, instead referred to the DAV or a private attorney. No, this is a criminal matter. I want the police to act on it. I want to see some arrests. I want to see some prosecutions. Somebody stole $300,000 put it in uh, an account, phony account in First Premier Bank that was supposed to be for my benefit, but I did not benefit. It was for the purpose, express purpose, of causing my harm and death. Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Is you for your Is my time up? Yes, thank you, sir. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. <laughs> I came, I just wanted to thank somebody. That, and sir, just your name, please, first. Grant Whitwam. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Grant. I live on the Thousand Block North Summit. Thank you, Grant. And I was just astounded yesterday, the street sweepers came by and swept the street. That means a lot to me. I try to keep my house clean. 
Thank you. And the curbs were just overflowing with leaves, and it's great that they got that. It's real important because my block is level and all the water comes down from like Minnesota to Cathedral, and if the sewers are blocked, it goes right up into my garage. <laughs> and uh, it's really late in the year, and I was just astounded. I was so glad. I know they're setting up for winter time, yeah, but somebody is smart to do, sweep the street. I mean, it keeps the sewers Thank open. You. So I just want to thank whoever it is. You know, it's just wonderful, especially when they plow, then there's not all those leaves that, uh, there's only about a third of the people do anything with leaves in the block where I live. So thanks to, thank everybody involved in that choice, all right? Grant, we really appreciate okay. your comments. Thanks for coming tonight, yep. we appreciate it. Thanks for being so productive too. Thanks. Yeah, Grant, <laughs> thank you, welcome. Hello. Hi. This is Heather Pastor. Hello, Heather. Kind of short. <laughs> Sorry, you can pull those down if you want, Heather. All right. Hey, Thank you. Um, I wanted to speak about a little bit what the first uh, woman was talking about. Um, you know, me and my fiance, we are two couples, and uh, we've been um, struggling big time out here. And one thing that really bothers me is the whole like kind of like stereotype labeling thing. You know, I understand that there are some homelesses that, you know, are too drunk, passed out on the street. There are some homelesses that don't want to do anything with their lives. But me and my fiance, actually, like I spoke last time, we, act we actually have to use the only income that we get to live off of to pay for a hotel and for everything else because we don't get accepted for places. We get the runaround game. People use my disability against me to boot me out of places or to run me out and to try to stop me from basically standing up for my rights. I have conquered a lot of things. I've grown and matured in a lot of ways. Uh, believe it or not, I see three different counselors, including my case manager at Fish Street, who's, she's been very, very good to me. Um, it's just not easy living out here and I, I'm trying to get, like I said last time, I'm trying to get someone to direct me to the right attorney because uh, it is a civil matter and it is a matter of my life and we lost our Section 8 voucher due to the situation. Um, my fiance is looking for work. Um, I ha suffer from physical conditions and my mom, she, she passed away from being neglected in, in nursing homes. Uh, Southeastern had a lot to do with that. And last winter, I found out that my Auntie Debbie, who lives actually lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, died from lung cancer. She was in the same situation that me and my fiance are in before she died. And I haven't even seen my auntie since I was like, like in my diapers. And um, I just want to say, like, you know what that woman said, if you guys are going to help people out, what you guys should do, like helping couple, couples that are actually trying to do something with their life, not just discriminate and say, well, you know, because every homeless is doing this and that, that means that that's what you people are going to do. No, me and my man are trying to get our lives together because as it stands, he's all that I got. You know, I've been working my butt off to get what documentations I did get. I even got a note from the Jake Lowe office, believe it or not, stating that, yes, there is something to be looked into. Yes, Heather is being discriminated against. Yes, her disability is being held against her. Yes, she's been assaulted and treated unfairly. And it's not easy, but I just think that the people should start doing more things for people that are actually trying to make it and trying to make a life for themselves, not just saying, oh, because these people are passed out drunk on the street, that that means that, that means me and my man would, or these people would do this, that means that you guys are going to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. We appreciate it. Welcome. Yeah. I'm there. How you doing? I'm James. I'm sorry, I got a cold. Um... I, uh, I know you guys got a lot, and I know there's a lot of people you have to take care of and a lot, a lot of things you listen to. And it's just like today, I sit there and see like, two officers try to wake a guy up off the street, which was passed out. But it's just like she says, there are some that try to do some, some that don't want to do some. You know, it, it's hard to, to choose and pick. And it's just like that one lady says about, you know, you got Benjamin's buildings around here that actually could be used for help, for helping people. And um, 
and um, I know it's tough because I've been like every day I go out trying to find work and I get slammed in my face the door that I'm determined not to to fail. It's just like the time is is you know I help people and I like doing that because for simple reason is is when I was little I had no one no one helped me out. I mean. I had to eat out garbage cans and everything when I was little. It's not very good. And I failed a few times, but I'm back on my feet. And I go see like counselors like that, and I'm a go-getter, and I refuse to go back down that, I call it a staircase, back down that staircase again, or back down that closet. I refuse to do that, and I enjoy helping people, and it's, it's a battle. I mean, it's a no-win situation. I mean, who you gonna, who's gonna help? Who's, who are you gonna choose to help? You know, because you hear a lot, you know, and it's tough. I I, re I understand that because I I see I I look at people when they're on the streets, okay, and I see the way some of them are, and I see the way some people do, and I see people come up and literally give people stuff, and and I know it's not easy. <laughs> But it's just like I said, if the buildings that are vacant, let's use, let's use them, you know. I mean, I'll even help. I mean, I don't mind it. I, I enjoy it. Because I like to do something. I can't stand standing around doing nothing. Because that's what makes you think, okay. And I refuse, like I said, to go back down. I'm a go-getter, and I, I just want to help. Thanks, and James. I want to make it. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. Welcome. Scott Erisman, Sioux Falls. <clears throat> I was watching the information all today and wow, blown away. We're gonna build a 525 stall parking ramp for $20 million. Now, I'll say this right off the bat. I am all for building a parking ramp downtown. They need one. There's been plenty of studies done. We know it. Not big. I'm not a big fan of the location. I think we should go more east with it to be closer to the railroad redevelopment. That aside, we are getting hosed as a city on this proposal. Hosed. A normal stall for a parking ramp costs twenty-five thousand dollars, and we are paying double for it. Why would we? Why would we agree to this? We would be much better off building this on our own. The airport authority is, gonna, is proposing to build a thousand stall parking ramp for the same price. How are they doing it? Has anyone ever went and went and talked to them and asked them how they, how they were able to manage this? If I was the finance director for the city and someone handed me this proposal, I would have busted up laughing. Why would we pay double for double for stalls than everybody else in the industry pays. That's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. I say build a parking ramp, build it on its own, and build it for $25,000 a stall. You know why it's expensive? Because we are building the foundation for this hotel. We are subsidizing this developer by about probably $10 million because it should only cost about $10 million for 500 stalls, and we are subsidizing them another $10 million for their hotel. Why on earth would the taxpayers of Sioux Falls, as you heard all these people come up here and talk about the problems we have with uh, the working poor and the homeless, why on earth would the taxpayers give up $10 million to a private hotel? Free enterprise, let them build it on their own. Boy, if you pass this, there is gonna be backlash you wouldn't believe. I can't believe you would even think that this is even a logical thing to do. <laughs> wow, apparently somebody doesn't have any calculators in the finance department here. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about TIFFs a little bit. There was a recent uh, presentation, as far as I know, the public wasn't invited. That's for good reason. They tried to get the elected officials on board for TIFFs. Recently, I read a presentation from an economist uh, assistant professor at the uh, Iowa State University. Uh, he studied TIFFs for years. He finds barely any benefit to the public by giving a TIFF. He calls it what it is, a rebate to a developer. 
tax rebate to a developer that ends up costing everybody else more, mo more money in taxes to supplement it. I'm not suggesting we uh, cut back on TIFs. I'm suggesting we don't do TIFs anymore at all. It would be much more economical and smarter to have our community development office work on doing low interest or no interest loans to people who want to build affordable housing in this town and would go a long ways and a lot farther than, than any TIF. A TIF is a handout, period. If you want to read his report, get a hold of Dave Swenson with Iowa State University. He'd be glad to talk to you about all the repercussions of TIFs and how they don't ever pay off. One more thing, uh, the trains downtown, they've been running a lot more lately. That's because the city finally took over this land. When this was originally proposed um, several years ago, the idea was to limit train traffic downtown or get rid of it altogether. Over the past month, I've sat three times at lunch waiting for a train. I sat once at five o'clock on a Friday waiting for a train across Cliff Avenue. Cars backed all the way up back past Cliff and back all the way back up almost to 26th Street. We spent $27 million, handed it over to Warren Buffett, and we did nothing to solve the train traffic problem in this town. Another example of poorly spent money. I just want to finish by saying, a lot of us come up here and talk every week. and We don't come up here to entertain you. We come up here to inform you. Did anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Okay. Please start. Okay, so this is the second phase of um, the police department uh, with Chief Burns that is totally against this. It's called the CALEA. And the CALEA is an accredited program. And what the CALEA does is it strengthens crime prevention and con control capabilities. Wow, really? The Sioux Falls really needs this because um, our crime prevention on the streets is really bad. Um, Chief Burns is against the CALEA because it's going to cost the taxpayers too much money. About this size of a city with the CALEA might cost the taxpayers about 18 to 2100 bucks. It's a three-year program. Um, it is about um, formulizing management procedures, establishing fair and non-discriminatory personal practices, and improving service de uh, de uh, delivery. It also organizes your police department. Um, I have been to several hearings um, in other police departments. I just had one last month, 2,500 miles away from here, um, to get them accredited, which it went through. Um, the board is usually um, four to five chief of policemen throughout the, um, the uh, state to do these CALEAs. So we have, so to recap on the chief of police, because I'm on to him. Um, yes, now we have the body camera situation that we haven't uh, be able to get on these uh, policemen that shows accountability. So accountability is, is a major part in the streets of crime of today. Then we have the Kalia that he's totally against. Now, let's ask the citizens on the streets when I went in the summer of last year and told them about the Kalia. They were willingly to pay the 18 to $2,100 to be accredited. The uh, police, the fire department is accredited and you have the ambulance department that is uh, um, accredited for this. So a chief of police that is not for body cameras to hold people accountable for accountability and is against a CALEA, then why do we have a chief of police in this city that is running the police department. I have told um, Mayor Uther's um, secretary, he's more than welcome to come and debate here because I have more to come in the next two weeks of it. But he hasn't shut up since. Very good. Uh, Bruce, you must have something really good too. Of course I do, it's Bruce Danielson and I guess I'm here to entertain you too. Because after listening to the informational today and 
CNL were paying about $12 million for a hotel foundation and brought to mind the, the movie The Sting. If you remember The Sting, it, I expected to see Robert Redford and Paul Newman come walking in with their fedoras and their, and their fancy shoes to talk about the scam. Because it made me start wondering, what is the scam? Who's the mark? What game are they playing? The Chicago, the Coney, you know. Remember all those games? Every time the mark would come in and they'd start figuring out one angle or the other, all of a sudden we would go in this area. So let's play the Chicago. Nope, now we got to play this one. So it, it made me start wondering uh, what we were doing. And I realized your presenters were playing the CMR. This construction manager at risk seems to be the game. Secrecy is, is the process. Transparency is gone. In 2014, the entire uh, ramp was going to cost about $9 million. Now it's over $20 million. Just so we can brag about a 13-story building to make downtown Sioux Falls modern. First, we, we watch buildings fall down because our building department doesn't seem to care that there's problems. Bruce, then, thank you very much. No, I'm going to finish. Thank you. I no, find no. it interesting Bruce. that we're getting to Bruce. a legacy building with a legacy floor count. Bruce, your, your you last comment. You have three weeks to blow the future of Sioux Falls on a stand. Council, thank Council. you. The last comment was completely uncalled for. No, no. Please, call, the last comment was completely uncalled for. Did anybody else want anybody else want to engage the council? Anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. My name is Deborah Shields, and I am one of the street dwellers. And I have no support. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what a safety zone is, but I've slipped through it. But I am one of the street dwellers and a homeless person. And I've been here 11 years, and I'm still trying to get somewhere. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Item 10. First reading, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving a Mid-American Energy Company gas and regulator station easement. Good evening, Council. <clears throat> Council Kurt Peppel, Public Works Engineering. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the site that we're looking at uh, for the easement is East uh, 34th Street North and Cliff Avenue, Northeast Sioux Falls. Uh, the easement uh, <clears throat> is required. Mid American Energy has a gas and regulator regulator station at this site. is an old water tower site. Uh, there's no longer a water tower there, but the um, Mid-American improvements have been there for a number of years. Uh, this, uh, the city is okay with them to be there, but we thought it was prudent to, to get an easement in place to protect everybody's interest as, um, as we move forward. So we would ask for your support on this. Thanks so much, Kurt. Appreciate it. Uh, Council, uh, this is a first reading. Any, any comments? Thank you, Councilor Starr. Yes, uh, Kurt, earlier this year we had a, a public meeting in the park up there and had some concerns. Have you had a chance to take a look at the, the there's a venting, um, some pipes and some things that are available, available, and I didn't know if you had a chance to take a look at this. Maybe I'm in the wrong spot. I apologize. I can't speak to that, I guess. No, I'm in the wrong spot. I apologize. Myself. Sorry, Councilor. I would move to uh, set the data here. Thank you, Councilor Starr. Appreciate it. Uh, Councilor Starr would like to set a data hearing, second reading for Tuesday, November 21st. Is there a second? Second, Urban Bach. Thank you, Councilor Urban Bach. Any roll call vote, please. Council Member Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Urban Bach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Rolf. Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 11. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and SMG for the management of the Denny Sanford Premier Center, the Sioux Falls Arena, the Sioux Falls Convention Center, the Orpheum Theater, and the Sioux Falls Baseball Stadium.
Good evening, Tracy. Welcome. Good evening, Tracy Turback with the Finance Office. Uh, items 11, 12, and 13 were all uh, the subject of a presentation uh, a week ago at your informational meeting. Uh, we had a pretty good Q&A session uh, throughout the presentation, so I won't go into a lot of details tonight unless you've got questions. Uh, we do have folks here from SMG uh, also available to answer questions if you have any. Uh, this is a five-year agreement, uh, as Denise mentioned, uh, that would uh, contract with SMG to continue doing the good things they're doing for the city uh, with our entertainment venues. So I'll stand by for any questions. Thank you. Tracy, thank you. Uh, folks, this is a resolution. You do have the opportunity to engage the council on this if you'd like. Yeah, welcome. Scott Harrisman, Sioux Falls. I attended my first paid show this past Saturday at the at the Premier Center, and uh, the show was great. Set up really well for concerts. Um, I compare it to the Quest in Omaha. I've been to several concerts there. Um, just not a big fan of arena concerts, but I'm not going to see <laughs> the Foo Fighters at Icon Lounge. Icon Lounge, so I had to come see them there. Um, the only th the only thing I would like to see SMG do over the next five years with their renewed contract is um, promoting some more of their own shows. And the reason I say that is because we see daily in press releases, oh, not daily, but in press releases all the time, that we're selling out shows that were highly successful, that were the 88th most popular uh, concert thing and venue in the world. Um, we're always selling out shows. And I keep asking myself, we're so popular and we're selling out all these shows, why aren't we promoting some of them? Because if we started promoting some of our own shows, we could make a lot of money, a lot more money than we're making now off that building and help pay down the mortgage. Um, Terry and Chris have been in this industry for a long time. They're very good at what they do. I mean, it shows. We got sold out shows out there all the time. I would like to see the SMG to take more of a risk over the next five years and start promoting their own shows, some more of their own shows, especially shows we know are going to sell out. Why go through a promoter? Why give all the money to the promoter and the artist? How about the citizens get a little money? It's our building. We paid for it. Let's get a little bit back. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Uh, anybody else? Council? I would move approval, Rolfing. Second. Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to approve this resolution, seconded by Council Chair Kiley. Council Starr. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. One of the things that I wanted to point out tonight is I wanted to uh, just say that we should take a look as part of the audit committee, Councilor Rolfing, if we could uh, scheduling uh, our normal internal audit process as part of each one of these agreements. So if we could take a look at take a couple of them in 18 and 19 would, uh, I think, give the citizens a chance to, to take a review. If you could bring that up at the, the next audit committee, I'd appreciate that and, and put that in the plan so we have enough time to uh, work with our partners as well. I'm not looking for anything in particular, but I think it's good uh, due diligence for the citizens. It's been a while, I think, with each one of these groups and, and getting that scheduled, I think, would be a good thing. Councilor Starr, thank you. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Council that has passed 8 to 0. Thank you. Item 12, please. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Ovations Food Services, LP, DBA, Spectra Food Services, and Hospitality for the food and beverage services of the Denny Sanford Premier Center, the Sioux Falls Arena, the Sioux Falls Convention Center, the Orpheum Theater, and the Sioux Falls Baseball Stadium. Thank you. Tracy Turback again. Uh, this uh, would also be a five-year agreement. Uh, with Spectre to provide the food and beverage services for our entertainment venues. Uh, Chad Stoner, general manager of Spectre, is here as well. So if you've got questions for him uh, or me, uh, be happy to stand by for any questions you have. Thank you. Tracy, thank you as well. Chad and team, thanks for being here. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak to this particular <coughs> item? Welcome. I'm David Zokaitis, and I don't really know a whole lot about this particular item, but what I'm kind of concerned about is the lack of comp competition between vendors. It seems as though the, the city picked this one vendor, or maybe they picked SMG, and they're good, and they're good enough. Well, I, I don't think that's a good way to spend all that kind of money. It's, 
good to compare vendors and see if somebody's got a better plan. And that's all. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Uh, Council, in your hands, please. Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Rolfing. Uh, Councilor Vice Chair uh, Erickson's made a motion to approve this resolution. Second by Councilor Rolfing. A roll call vote, please. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erfenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Item 13, please. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Washington Pavilion Management, Inc. for the management of the Washington Pavilion of Arts and Science. Tracy, good evening. One, one more time, Tracy Turback with the Finance Office. Uh, this, too, is a five-year agreement with the uh, Washington Pavilion Management, Inc. Uh, they do have representatives here tonight, and uh, they, as well as I, will stand by for any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Darren, thanks for being here, along with your team. We appreciate it. Uh, Tracy, thank you. Folks, did anybody want to engage the council on this resolution? Welcome. Scott Erskman. I'm going to give you guys one more opportunity here to make an amendment to this contract tonight and make sure the Visual Arts Center is free to everybody <coughs> for regional and local shows. National ex exhibitions, of course, would be charged. This was promised at the beginning when the pavilion opened and it went away and no one knows why. But you have an opportunity here tonight to bring it back. It's not going to cost the pavilion that much for us to have that open for free during their regular business hours. And we subsidize them for over a million dollars a year. We can find a little part of that money to help do that. I also want to say that I was very disappointed that there hasn't been an internal audit from the city of this building for 10 years. I'm also disappointed that uh, the last year's financials came out in June 20th from ID Bailey and they haven't been brought to the public till last week. This is, I guess, how we do contract negotiations. Secret, secret, secret. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, folks, anybody else? Council? Move approval, Neitzert. Second, Erickson. Councilor Neitzert has made a motion to approve this resolution, seconded by Councilor Vice Chair Erickson. If, sure. Yes, Councilor Starr. Mr. Mayor, thank yes, you. Sir. Um, Mr. Smith, if you don't mind, can I just ask a, a quick question? <coughs> Darren, welcome. Thank you. I think uh, one of the things that you shared with me when we had the opportunity to speak is some plans for the Visual Arts Center and for, for that, if you wouldn't mind, to, if, if you're yeah. ready to address that. Yeah, concern. absolutely. We've uh, we've got lots of plans in 2018 to change a number of things. Uh, we're, we talked about last week, we're going to do a complete makeover of two floors in the Science Center. That's going to uh, lead to some significant improvements in attendance. But in the Visual Arts Center in particular, what we want to do is uh, make some changes there with new exhibits and also how we engage patrons and broaden the audience. We want to provide some family friendly, children friendly exhibits and engagement. Um, so we're pretty excited about it, and we're going to have a series of announcements over the next few months and, and share some more details when we're ready to do that. But, but uh, yeah, we expect our numbers to, to uh, go up exponentially. The truth is they have been going up pretty significantly the last two, last two years. The Visual Arts Center attendance, I believe, is up 22 percent uh, in 16 over 15. So we're headed in the right direction, but we want it to be significantly more. So we're going to make some changes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Starr. Appreciate it. I roll call vote, please. Council Member Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Council, thank you. That has passed 8 to 0. Any new business, Council? Move to adjourn, Erickson. Thank you. Second, uh, Erpenbach. There's been a motion to adjourn, has been seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This meeting is adjourned to falls. Make it a great night. Thank you. <laughs>